Welcome to Shiro's Unlimited Behind the Book. I'm Janie Morris, CEO and founder of Shiro's Unlimited, and I'm delighted to have your company once again. Or if this is your very first time of tuning in to Shiro's Unlimited Behind the Book podcast, double, triple welcome from me in particular. It's great to have your company. Every episode that we have on our Shiro's Unlimited Behind the Book series, uh, we interview amazing women that are authors. They're, of course, Shiro's Unlimited is a global community for women over 50. So all of our authors are, just like me, over 50. Uh, and they have written amazing books that are changing people's lives. And I'm absolutely delighted to bring to you today uh, a woman that I have not physically met yet. Uh, however, I'm sure that in the very near future, with the way that the world is changing, we're going to be able to make that happen. Um, however, uh, we were just talking off air and saying how our paths have crossed over the last couple of years, and we've been watching each other of what we do. And I've been incredibly inspired by what uh, Jenny does. Jenny Schmal uh, lives in Johannesburg in South Africa. She's an author, she's a coach, uh, she's a mum, she's an incredibly inspiring and supportive woman. And, uh, and she's also started doing some podcasts as well. So we'll talk about those in a moment so that you can get all of the details on how to contact her and, uh, and find out more about what she does. But today, it's a casual conversation. Shiro's Unlimited behind the book. Jenny, welcome. I'm so pleased to be here and you're quite correct. I followed you for a long time and um, I was so looking forward to this day. Um, and greetings to all the listeners. Now, what I'd like to do before we get into the book, um, you know I stalk you. <laughs> And, and you have some, um, you have fantastic Facebook groups and your focus really is women, uh, but you do embrace men in a big way, which is one of the reasons why we all love you, <laughs> no matter, uh, no matter what curveballs have come along in life. I want to talk about um, your coaching first and how that all came about. And in order to share that with the audience. I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking us back a little bit, Jenny, and giving us some of your background first. Okay, let's let's um, let's introduce Jenny. So um, the short and sweet. Jenny left school at fifteen. I was a person who wanted to buy lovely shoes, so left school very early. Never went to university, uh, but had a love for people and got married at a very young age. So by 19, I was engaged, 20, I was married, and um, three children thereafter. So 26, I had lived a full life, and uh, married for 17 years, and then a divorce. And then for about another 17 years, um, really struggled with that divorce. But in the end, we did become friends. And remembering that I'd never worked, I never had a job, I never had an education, and I had to go out into the world and this was really scary. So I went into sales, which again, um, you know, my communication skills were built there. And then uh, to cut a long, long story short, uh, which is all in the book that I've written, um, in 2006, I met a man and in 2008, so this is nearly 17 years after the divorce, I met a man whose wife had been in a wheelchair for 23 years. She passed and um, he went on a dating site and four years later he met me. I was number 36 that he dated, which was very interesting because a very pedantic uh, financial advisor type mentality and me being this bold woman out you know in the world but we clicked and he married me and um that's where all this started uh he died at about a year and a half after we married 
not even. He just walked out onto the golf course and had a massive heart attack. So went into the grief process. And just to go back a little, a year before I married him, the, hus the husband uh, and the father of my children died of uh, prostate cancer. And that was a closure for me of this. I thought it wouldn't touch me, but it did. It really hit me because you have that string that's attached to your children and to the father of your children and to your first love. Practically, you know, the person you were married to. So I was going through that healing and then my husband died of a heart attack. And then a year after he died, in fact, it's the anniversary today, uh, my son of 39 was murdered. So I was thrown into this massive grief process all in three years, three, three men in my life that were very significant died. And to actually to stay sane, I decided that I would um, write about my life on these little stickies, you know, that you get those little colored stickies yeah. and I stuck them in a shoebox, everything that I was going through. And of course, I, I was seeing the psychologist at the time. And even in the psychologist chair, I was just like a sponge taking this all in. And I really wanted to help women in particular, and of course I embraced men, uh, who were going through something similar. And I didn't know how to do that. So I invested uh, financially in myself and um, I decided to become a relationship coach. And so I got so many degrees. I thought if I had all these degrees behind me, you know, in paper on the wall, people would, um, you know, would come and be healed. And actually, when you go through those kind of processes of grief, grief, loss and recovery, what actually happens is you don't need any certificates. You just need you. And so it grew from there. It grew out of the grief process. It's, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you, Jenny. I'll take a personal second. And the hairs on the back of my arms are standing on end. Um, I left school at 15 because I thought I knew it all. <laughs> and, and I met my first husband um, not long after. And we were married and I had my first child by the time I was 19. So I was just, I'm sorry to indulge right there, but I'm just thinking these massive connections. And it's interesting because, you know, when you make that point in regards to, you know, feeling like you needed to have lots of degrees and lots of pieces of paper and frames on the back of the wall in order for others to take you seriously about what you, the gifts that you actually had to share with them to help and empower and improve their lives. Where in, where, um, in actual fact, you're already there. And it's interesting how, how we as humans, I, do you find, so, so, sorry, I'll just change that question a little bit for you. Do you find since you've since you've done that and you've invested in yourself and you've got all these fantastic degrees and what have you, do you find many people that you coach actually ask you for them? Or do they trust you straight person, out? I haven't had one person ask me for my degree. Not one. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. And yes, now, the deja vu is just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you to our listeners for allowing me that personal indulgence. Um, now, so, so that's led us into, into your book. The title of your book is Finally Find the Love of Your Life at Any Age. And I just want to read to our listeners now a section out of it. And then if, if we can go to that, please, Jenny. The men or women in your life are not random accidents. They are the result of your creation, conscious or unconscious. If you believe that all the good ones are taken or no one will look at me at my age, then you are most certainly creating unconsciously from your beliefs about yourself. Now, Jenny, that's from your book. I'm, I'm a woman over 50. And as all my followers know, I am recently out of my latest marriage. Um, I'm going through that now. Um, the, 
The second part of what I just read, no one will look at me at my age. A lot of my friends, both men and women, who I've had conversations with over the last few months, have said that about themselves as to be the reason why they're single at over 50, over 60, over 70. Why, um, talk to us about what I've just read that you've written and, 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 why, and why is that, why do you feel that they're incorrect? Well, you know, the word conscious is not a word that I use often, but it's, it sort of looked good in, in print. So I want to, so the, the conscious part is really your focused intention on, on what you want to bring into your life or who you want to bring into your life. And um, we have this, uh, we have a, a store in South Africa called Pick and Pay. You probably, in, in Australia, I, I quite, I've been to Australia once, I don't remember what the store is, but it's like a general store like Marks and Spencers, where you go and buy groceries. And most of us in life are in the store that I call Pick and Pay, looking for what we don't have that we feel we don't have. So we're looking for peace and love and joy and spontaneity. Those are the words that just came to me. And in the next hour, getting a, a jar of coffee, it's somebody looking for the same things and you meet. So it's really um, a vibrational thing. So today I'm very happy. And I've met on the other side of the, the podcast, somebody that's vibrating at that same happiness, although she's going through a difficult period. So we sort of attracting each other and that's what conscious attraction is. And I, I specifically added at the end of the book at any age, because of my age, I'm 72. And I wrote the book um, in the first month of COVID, which, well, I was 70, let's say. And up until then, I'd never thought that I could write a book. And one day I just sat down, took out all the stickies that I wrote through my grief process and a book appeared. Of course, not magically, but it did. So we, we consciously create all the time. And so when we say no one will look at me, I have the same thing. I mean, who's going to look at somebody that's 72? And that really, um, you know, it really touched my heart that there's specifically women and men who are projecting onto others what they think they want and in all my coaching um, the underlying psychology self-love so when we and this this plays a big part in the book as I narrate my life you'll see that I was searching for me and then once you find you or what you is for you you can go out there and you'll attract people quite easily magnetically and I think it's that part that I want to put out. And it's why I have, a, you know, a Facebook group. And it's why I spoke or, or ran a pro bono divorce support group. Because there are two sides to every story. And then there's this story in the middle. And it's when we embrace the story in the middle from obviously retrospectively, when you're in it, it's very painful. But just looking back. What was that person in your life? What part did they play? What lesson? What gift? And it's really the gift of these people that I wrote about that um, my life just blossomed. You know, there I am, 72. Of course, I can get a date. Um, my last date is in the book, by the way. It ended in COVID. And if I can just, like you said, just take a moment. This was the most expensive date I've ever been on and I wasn't paying. I was flown to Australia to board the QE2 and COVID happened. And I arrived in South Africa. I arrived in um, Australia on the 12th of March and I was back in South Africa on the 14th. So I went to Australia for the, for the weekend and arrived back on the same plane and South Africa went into total lockdown. So I just made it back. So I have this affinity to Australia and to um, meeting somebody at that age. So I don't know if that's in a nutshell or if you have a question about that, but it's about consciously dating or consciously putting yourself out there. There is always somebody waiting for just you. And I think it's, it's, it's a really important point that you've just touched on as well. And um, in regards to 
And what you have done, what especially through this book, uh, which I'm sure is the first of many in this series that you're going to create now as well. But the it's it's interesting the point that you say then, Jenny. And do you find this with many of your coaching clients as well that in the relationships when they're reviewing those relationships, if you will, and and are they? Are they dis- they are discovering themselves in that other person and then to, so do we go into relationship looking for what we don't have more often than not in, and and that's a subconscious thing is that what you're saying as well i'm saying exactly that mm. so your soulmate is an art picturing of you right it's say that again so that everybody hears that yes <laughs> And, and I mean, some people say there isn't a soulmate. I don't know if there is, but I'm, I'm using it in, in, in language that we can understand. Yes. Your soulmate is an art picturing of you. The only thing you see when you look for a soulmate is you look into their eyes. So today I'm looking into your eyes and I'm seeing a Jenny that left school at 15 that has some connection to this woman I'm speaking to. And I feel good. You know, the oxytocin is running and the dopamine and I'm, well, we have a connection. And I think that's what happens at a psychological level. Mm-hmm. So we're looking for that thing that we perceive we don't have. So as a, as a young, as a, well, not the first marriage, but let's go to second. So I was looking for security and safety because I didn't feel part of a massive divorce. So without knowing, subconsciously, I was looking for not uh, George Clooney, although that would be lovely a weekend in, you know, chalet with George Clooney. But I was looking for somebody that was tall, strongly built, and so I could feel safe and secure. And then sometime, uh, and of course, these relationships can last. But I'm, I'm giving the other aspect of when, when it's, it's sort of run its course, you found that part of you and you move on. It's, it's, um, it's not what everybody wants to hear, but not one of my clients, they've all come, I want a new relationship. You know, this happened or that happened. I, and what they do is they find themselves. Yeah. And so they're not looking for George Clooney anymore. They're looking, they they sort of find that part in them and it really goes back, you know, to your origin story. So you're either looking for your mother or your father (laughs) because, you know, that's where we come from. So for the security or the passive or the aggressive, and remember there's always polarities, but um, most of them come to me and they say, you know what, I'm I'm looking and he's got to be um, tall and he's got to be um, friendly and spontaneous. And then I ask them, would you like him to be healthy? Would you like him to be financially independent? Would you like her to be um, compassionate? People don't look for that. We're Mm -hmm. looking for a visual. And then really what we're actually looking for are those little things inside us. Yes. that um, yes. we really want to bring out. So in, in this book that you've written, Finally Find the Love of Your Life at Any Age, can you give us a, can you give us a little insight of what we can expect chapter by chapter? Sure. So um, I, I took the top five loves, and I haven't had hundreds, but so from the puppy love uh, person that I met, and then uh, my first husband, and then somebody I call the free spirit. So this person who loves you, but they don't want commitment. And um, some little ones in between, and then the, um, the COVID date. And I, I, it's, it's really lighthearted, it's fun. You'll laugh, you will definitely identify as a woman. And most people have, read the book in one sitting so it wasn't a sad story it wasn't uh, poor me it was just this woman telling the truth about how she looks back at her life and what those people meant to her and she acknowledges them and um, the, the funniest part and uh, I've, I've actually done a little video on this was my honeymoon because I was really insecure insecure as a woman, insecure. I didn't know if I was beautiful or not, fat, thin, I just didn't want this man to look at anybody else, 
So it starts there. And this honeymoon is absolutely hysterical. And it shows you this woman that, you know, goes into, uh, I, I say in the book, the, the green goblin of jealousy and um, insecurity landed in Masaki. And that's what happened on my honeymoon. So it's I've, I've tried to be honest. Um, everybody's loved the book. And um, it's really strange because I asked a man to write the foreword. And um, it's uh, Nicholas and Eves who I do talks with wrote the foreword from a man's perspective who has three daughters. So it's really, it's just a beautiful book on, on, on love and finding self. Well, I can't wait to read it. I haven't had the opportunity to read it yet, but I do have my copy. Um, uh, and I'm really excited to sit down and take some time to really jump into it and to see if there's any other similarities there as well <laughs> with 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 um with the book i have spoken to some uh some mutual people that we know who have read the book and they have all said that it's absolutely brilliant beautifully written and as you say you can read it in one sitting and it's given them a lot of insight into themselves as well so Congratulations. Congratulations on that. Jenny, you've got a coaching program called the Ultimate Love Experience. Can you give us a little insight as to what that entails and who that's actually for? It's, it's quite strange. I started the Ultimate Love Experience specifically for women. I thought, you know, women would go on a, on a magical journey and find their inner goddess, which is self and go through that process. But I then found that um, men in their, their mid age wanted the same process. So it's for both, both genders, but it's for women to, you know, you all have that one thing about you that you don't like, or you don't show, or that's actually sitting inside you in the cells of your body, um, just waiting to trigger in a moment's notice that triggers something in you. It could be the color of your hair when you come from the hairdresser. It could be the look in your eye. It's that something, but only you know it. And it's something that we want to explore, get rid of and embrace the inner goddess. Because it doesn't matter what age you are, the inner goddess is eternal. You know, you arrived with it and, and for people who believe that they, you know, might come into another life even, they are, you know, there's no wrong, no right in my sort of coaching. Um, you want to embrace this. And what is the inner goddess? The inner goddess is embracing the best version of you. And the ultimate love experience is being raw, being honest and unpacking anything that is or isn't working for you. And, and shining through that. And that's really what it is. So it's, 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 I said in the beginning, it's not for everybody, but I want to change that it is for everybody. <laughs> it's just a beautiful process. And also my coaching is, um, I work, uh, I call it the virtual coaching limousine. So for me, to work with me, you can have a cappuccino moment, which is 30 minutes. You come with a problem, we fix it. And you would, you know, I call that getting on the bus, having a ticket. You get on the bus, you have a one-way ticket, you get off. Or you could get in the cab, which is, you know, much faster. Or, but you still have, you're going from A to B. But when you go into the coaching virtual limousine, you have that space. We can stop and get your dry cleaning on the way. We can have a glass of champagne. Whatever it is for you, we're going to make sure that you have the ultimate love experience. And in that, I want to say again, you will find yourself. And yes, if you want to find a significant other, once you've done that, that work, once you've embraced yourself, it's so much easier because you don't have to hide anymore. You can just be you. It's it, the, whole, the whole course, but also all of the different courses that you can select from that you offer, Jenny. I'm, I want to sign up now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, I, and I think that that's a really important point too, because I know there's a lot of coaches that listen to our podcasts, a lot of life coaches. And um, I think that's one thing that uh, sometimes we think 
uh, because we are already trained as life coaches and NLP coaches and timeline therapists and so on and so forth and psychologists and psychiatrists that we we don't have to have a counsellor ourselves. But we're actually the ones that really need this. <laughs> we need it's, it to it's strange that you on in our space, don't we? Uh, it's strange that you say that. 70% of my clients are in the coaching, consultant, healer, therapist industry. And I absolutely believe a coach needs a coach, a therapist needs a therapist, because we're human. So we have the skill set. You know, we get this degree and we have the skill set to work with others, whatever your modality. And, and we all have a process, but it's the process of being authentically you. It's easy to put on my coaching hat and center myself and have a conversation with you. But it's totally something else when I've got to open up and let you see my vulnerability. So I work with uh, coaches. Um, and in my industry, I'm called the no BS coach. So, you know, I, I, wanna, I want you to um, be committed. I want you to take responsibility and I will hold you accountable. And the, the, I will work with just about anybody, but I prefer to work with those who really want to experience something they have never experienced before. And it's sort of, you know, my... Um, my authority, my speciality with arts, you know, saying that humbly, that's what I love to do. Jenny, what on a, now where, you know, we're a couple of years into the COVID aftermath and, um, and, and life is as it is at the moment, and still the unknowns are more than they were before. On a day-to-day -day basis, what inspires you now, Jenny? I can honestly say, that I wake up joyful every day. And it's part of my coaching. I believe that I dance every day for two minutes in the apartment. There's just me. Um, I walk, I sing, I enjoy a good glass of wine. It's celebrating life. Yeah. Each day, what can I do today to celebrate life? Today is the anniversary of my son's death. And um, I didn't for one moment say I couldn't turn up today. I thought we will celebrate life in his memory today. And I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that that's okay to share that. But it was like, I want to celebrate life because that's what we have. We only have this moment. And I think uh, this crazy world that we've been in for 18 months has taught me that, that we only have this moment. Let's celebrate life, whatever it is. Well, we're very grateful that uh, and, and honoured that uh, we are sharing this day with you, uh, Jenny, and our hearts are all with you, uh, especially today. Before I let you go, I can't let you go without the Janie magic question, which is, if yes. you had an eight-year-old Jenny in front of you right now, what advice would you give to her? You are far bigger than your greatest fears. You are far bigger than your greatest fears and you're beautiful. That's fabulous. That is just a great way to, to end this beautiful interview. Thank you so much for that, Jenny. Jenny, what uh, our listeners, because our listeners are... Um, uh, first timers as well as regulars and of course they get us all they get our uh, podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, Apple all around the world so if any of them would like to get a copy of your book finally find the love of your life at any age or they'd like to speak to you about your coaching courses or they'd just like to get in contact with you how can they do that? I think the easiest way to contact me would be um, social media so uh, my Facebook page, which is just Jenny Schmoll. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have this group called, a private group called Relationship 101, which they could join, which is a Facebook group. My books are on Amazon in paperback and uh, you're in Australia. So um, if anybody's listening in Australia, Kindle, it's on Kindle. It's um, a publication in South Africa directly from me. And um, 
I'd like to say that if anybody read the book and they'd like a clarity coaching call, I would be absolutely so willing to, to have a chat with them. And that's fantastic. Thank yeah, you so much. My gift to the public today, yes. Thank you so much for that, Jenny. And to our listeners, um, wherever you're listening to us right now, all of the information that Jenny has just shared in regards to contacting her, it's all written below wherever you're listening or watching this podcast video uh, right now. And of course, uh, for those of you who follow us on a regular basis at Shiro's Unlimited, you do know that we have a regular magazine, Shiro's Unlimited magazine. And off air before we uh, started this podcast today, Jenny has agreed to be in our next issue of Shiro's Unlimited. So she'll be talking about her book, she'll be talking about her coaching, she'll be giving some advice for all of you. So we're pretty excited and honored about that. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> That's going to be fantastic. But before we let you go, Jenny, the book Finally Find the Love of Your Life at Any Age is going to resonate with every man and woman that reads it and I'd like to say thank you so much for taking your time today and joining us on Shiro's Unlimited behind the book. It's my absolute pleasure and honor thank you. No, you, you are welcome. And so to you, our valued listeners, if you've enjoyed listening to this podcast as much as I always love bringing them to you, then make sure that you like comment below, um, share, spread the love. That's how we get more people helped, empowered and inspired through our podcasts. And of course, if you never want to miss an episode of any of the podcasts that we do, then make sure you go to shirosunlimited.com and subscribe in the podcast section. When you go there, you can see all of the previous podcasts in all of our series. You can uh, download all of them there. And if you subscribe on that page, then you get every episode of all of our new podcasts first before anybody else does. But of course, as I mentioned before, all of our podcasts are available on iTunes, Spotify, Apple, everywhere you get your uh, podcasts uh, streamed from, we are there. We're Global Shiro's Unlimited, global community for women over 50. I'm Janie Morris, and it's been my absolute pleasure having your company. And I look forward to you sharing again when next we're back with Shiro's Unlimited behind the book.